Half of New Zealand's carbon emissions come from livestock, most of which is methane. How is it that livestock can produce so much greenhouse gas? And is it really as bad as coal and oil? <laughs> Good day. New Zealand has a lot of sheep and cattle and they do produce a lot of methane. But did you know that more methane comes from the pointy end rather than the back door? <laughs> so when people talk about cow farts causing global warming, they are quite wrong. But it's not just about where the methane comes from, but also on how much of a problem it is. Methane from our cows and sheep is a greenhouse gas, but it is not the same as the greenhouse gases produced by coal and oil. Let me explain. When we burn coal and oil, we add CO2 to the atmosphere. This CO2 lasts for hundreds of years, and therefore adds to the stock of CO2 already in the atmosphere. For every liter of petrol we burn, around 2.3 kg CO2 are added to the atmosphere. Methane is different. When an animal belches methane, it does not necessarily add to the atmospheric stock of methane, because methane does not last in the atmosphere for very long, and is constantly oxidizing to CO2. It is all part of a cycle. CO2 grows the grass. The cow eats the grass. The cow belches methane. Methane oxidizes to CO2. And CO2 grows the grass. As long as the number of livestock remain constant, their emissions do not cause the atmospheric concentration of methane to increase, and therefore do not cause the atmosphere to warm. The CO2 the methane breaks down to is not responsible for global warming either, because it was sourced from the atmosphere, not under the ground. We do not count a lot of CO2 emissions as causing global warming for the same reason. When we breathe out, we emit CO2. But because it does not add to the stock of CO2 in the atmosphere, we do not blame it for global warming. It is all part of a cycle. CO2 grows the food. We eat the food. And when we breathe out, the CO2 returns to grow more food. So why do they not treat cyclical methane emissions in the same way that they treat cyclical CO2 emissions? Well, it was all just a big mistake, really. And it is all to do with what they call carbon. The politicians wanted to come up with a way to quantify all the different greenhouse gas emissions using one measure. So that they could create emission trading schemes and make international agreements such as the Kyoto Protocol and the Paris Climate Agreement. So the climate scientists came up with the idea to invent a unit called carbon or carbon dioxide equivalent. All the greenhouse gases are compared to each other and quantified in terms of their global warming potential, compared to carbon dioxide. The three main greenhouse gases are CO2, methane, and nitrous oxide, which also comes from livestock, which, as you can see, does not have any carbon atoms in it at all, and demonstrates that the carbon climate scientists refer to has nothing to do with the real carbon atom that real scientists refer to. CO2 is equivalent to itself, so every ton of CO2 that is emitted is quantified as one ton of carbon. Methane has a global warming potential of 25, because it is 25 times more effective than CO2 at warming the planet. So every ton of methane emitted is 25 tons of carbon. New Zealand emits 80,000 tons of carbon each year, and 35% of them are from methane. However, while every ton of non-cyclical CO2 emitted as carbon adds to the atmospheric stock of CO2, the 28,000 tons of carbon said to be produced from methane don't necessarily add to the atmospheric stock of methane at all. This is where the carbon unit sort of falls to bits. The climate scientists thought they had come up with a good idea. Quantifying different gases using one unit, called carbon, had some merit when it applied to new emissions that caused the atmospheric concentration of greenhouse gas to increase, such as if we increase the number of sheep or cattle. These emissions would be additive, as are the emissions from your car exhaust, because they result in an increase in atmospheric greenhouse gas. 
If we produce one ton of new methane from adding more sheep and cattle, under their system it is the same as if we produce 25 tons of new CO2. But what the climate scientists forgot to consider is that when methane is sourced from constant emissions, which is most of them, the system did not work, and they had developed a system which bore no resemblance to reality, and was creating huge quantities of fictional carbon that did not correspond to any increase in the concentration of any greenhouse gas. This is a fairly obvious mistake, and it is not clear why the climate scientists made it. Focusing on half a form of carbon cycle, as they do, but then ignoring this part, is not very scientific, and this causes big problems for all of us. Because the politicians only worry about carbon emissions, they think all carbon emissions are the same, and equally problematic, and so they focus on trying to reduce carbon emissions. But as you can see, if the carbon emissions they reduce are not causing any increase in greenhouse effect, they're actually not achieving anything. The politicians and the environmentalists can blame farmers for their carbon emissions as much as they like, and even make them pay unless they reduce them. But unless these emissions correspond to an increase in real greenhouse gas in the atmosphere, they are not doing any harm. And not only is blaming the farmers unfair, reducing these emissions is not going to stop global warming. So just because a climate scientist says that livestock make up half our carbon emissions, it does not mean they are a problem, because carbon is not real, and its invention was just a big mistake. One can only wonder what other mistakes the scientists have made, but what we do know is, when they say livestock produce half our greenhouse gas emissions and are a major cause of global warming, they are talking a load of... If you would like to know more, or want to help, please pass this video on, and you can visit our website at www.farmcarbon.co.nz.